Hello friends out there in YouTube land, Rob Ham here. Today we're talking about the Instax Mini Evo and the app that powers it. I'm gonna do a print for you to show you how these things work. And we're gonna go through the direct print, remote shooting, transferred images, as well as settings and how to set this camera up to work with your phone. Now, the test device today is actually going to be the Galaxy Z Fold 2. Not all of the menus will show properly on this. It needs some app optimization. If you have some issues with your app working, please don't forget to leave that down in the comments so that Fujifilm can see it and address it. Today we're going to be talking about how I use this camera specifically on weddings as well as to document my life, but I use it in conjunction with other professional cameras or cell phones to get digital images worth archiving. Friends, sometimes I'm asked if the Mini Evo is good for documenting your daily life, and the answer is sure if you like instant prints works great. But anything other than that, the digital images captured by this camera just are not up to snuff for anything that you would want to archive over a period of time. Your cell phone will do a better job. That needs to be said. That does not mean that this camera does not take great images and it doesn't mean that people should get their feelings hurt. It means that you have to understand the limitations. Believe it or not, some people are real big fanboys of this camera. And the reality is, as a digital camera, it is terrible. As an Instax camera, it is only good. But as a hybrid camera, it is great. Let's get a couple things out of the way first. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment down below and use those Amazon links as I find them very helpful. Help support the channel, I greatly appreciate it. All right, let's talk about how we actually pair the camera. Pairing is pretty simple. We're gonna come down here to settings and we go to our Bluetooth settings. From here on the Mini Evo, we need to actually get out of this display screen, which the only way we can do is by full pressing the shutter button, and then we can press our menu and OK button. You'll find Bluetooth settings on the first screen, and you'll scroll all the way down to Bluetooth settings and click OK. Then you'll go to pairing registration. You will also click OK. When you do that, if you have not paired the camera, it will bring up a pairing screen much like this one. If you have already paired the camera, it will tell you to be careful because you need to delete this pairing before you start a new one. In any event, I have already paired, but that's all right. We're gonna press OK to go back, and the information you will see is right here, your Bluetooth address, the name of the camera, and the registered terminal name. You can choose to change any of these, but these will tell you where the camera has been registered to and what the camera name is. So if you need to access that, this information will also correspond on your cell phone, and you can find it in both of those places. I'm gonna close out of this, and I'm gonna go back to my regular menu screen. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and talk about the direct print function. I'm gonna go ahead and click direct print on my cell phone, and I'm gonna come over here to where it says select an image. Now we've got a couple of things we can do, and we're going to notice that when we select an image, let's say <laughs> this little picture of my Mr. Pookie. Let's say this one right here. As we look at this image, you'll notice that the border does not match completely. That's because the phone is not, the app on the phone is not optimized. But when we go into our settings, we'll see that it's just fine. Now for this one, I actually want to rotate this a couple times. And for there, we can actually zoom just a little bit and just frame the face nicely. That's going to be a beautiful print right there. Here as well, we're going to go ahead and choose our filter and just see what auto will do to it. I think auto is gonna do a nice job and we can also come over here and to correct it. I'm gonna bring some of the contrast down because Fujifilm Instax Mini Film is extremely contrasty. This image was taken on a, this image was taken on a Sony A7R2 with a 28 millimeter lens. The regular file for this image is just gigantic. It's right around 88 megabytes. And this is the transfer over to Lightroom from the camera and into the Fujifilm app. Now, we're ready to go here. We can click print. It's gonna show us down here, we've got an issue where a menu item is overlaying another menu item. This is an issue specifically with the Z Fold 2. If you have an issue like that, please leave it down in the comments below. But it will tell you that it is printing in the print mode natural, which is what we want for portraits. From here, I'm gonna go ahead and click print, and you can see that it immediately comes right over here. It sends this image pretty quickly, and it's beginning to set up the printing process, and now it's printing. It doesn't take too long to print, and as you can see, we've got an image coming out right now. Okay, so it tells me that this image is printed. We know that it is. That's good to go. We'll set that right there at the front, and you guys can kind of watch it develop. All right, let's now move into another part that we've done our direct print. We can actually come over here and do our remote shooting. With remote shooting, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the live view on, and you'll notice it sees one of my lights in the background. From here, I'm actually gonna turn it around and focus it up here on me so that you can kind of see, hi, 
just like that. In this case, I've got my flash on and my two second timer or my self timer is off. But I'm gonna go ahead and turn the self timer on. I'm gonna go ahead and tail it to take a photo. I can actually move this around a little bit, but we'll keep it right back there. Maybe you can see some of the images. I'm gonna put a 10 second timer on here so I can grab some of these and Great, great. So now we can kind of see. There we go. Kind of a fun photo right there, as you can see. Nice image. And that's that. I'm going to go ahead and cancel. We're done. So as you can see, live view, really a lot of fun. Great way to use that is with one of those little mini tripods. And then you can put it up wherever you like, put it in a gorilla pod, and then put it in a tree. And, you know, it'll be fun. Let's go to the transferred images. So there are images that you can transfer over here from your phone to the camera and from the camera to the phone. But in order to get there first, we need to be in our print menu or our playback menu. On the camera, we're gonna come over here and we're gonna press our OK button. So make sure that we're in our playback menu. We're gonna go down here to printed image transfer. Now I've transferred most of these images, but I'll take this one and this one right here. I'm just gonna click my OK button. That puts a check mark at the top, and then I'm gonna select another image, put the check mark right there. When I'm done and ready to print, I'm going, or ready to transfer, I'm gonna press the plus button. Notice that the phone will immediately begin receiving that image. And now, since we've printed those, I've got both of these images right here with this nice Instax border. Now, we can do some stuff with this. It's telling us down here that we're printing in natural mode. If we wanted to print in rich mode, we would need to do that on the settings menu. I'll show that later. We don't usually wanna print portraits in rich mode, so that's okay. We're gonna to touch this little box that's underneath it and it might take me a moment to get to it. As you can see, I had to press it several times just to get to the menu underneath. Now here we get the nice part of having the Instax border around our photo. The problem is a lot of these prints were printed using a specialty border and it would really be nice to be able to change out to the specialty borders. Even if we could only get a QR code after purchasing the specialty film, scan the film and we can print so many images with that specialty border, it definitely is something that Fujifilm needs to address. However, we can have the image with any background color that we want. You've got 10 cho choices and you can have a transparent background or you can choose your own. Also, we can come over here to set the background. We choose an image. And let's have this fun right here, playing a game in the background. So there's actually them playing a the game. Set it right there. We can zoom in a little bit. Zoom out. I think I like it like that. We can rotate the image. We can add a filter to it, make it black and white, give it some correction pop, add some saturation to it. And we can also add a blur to it. Okay, save it. At this point in time, we can save that image, and the image is now saved to our phone. Really cool. All right, that leaves just one other thing to talk about, and that is settings right here. In the settings, we've already talked about the Bluetooth mode, but here's the print option. We're gonna wanna choose Instax, natural, or rich mode. Here's the deal. There are some times where you might choose rich mode with a portrait, but generally speaking, you're going to want to choose the natural mode with portraits. Rich mode is like adding vibrance to your image. Not necessarily saturation, although it does saturate, but it doesn't saturate every part of the image equally. The rich mode specifically will saturate the reds and yellows. Now, this is important to note because reds and yellows are found in most people's skin tones and that will make their faces look pink and waxy. And if you don't want that, use the natural mode. Rich mode is great for landscapes. But this image right here was printed in rich mode and it looks great, so how did I do that? Well, it was done by shooting in a specific film simulation mode with a lens effect that's added. I shot in the blue film simulation mode, which desaturates the red but keeps the blue vibrant. I also had a light leak here, which was pretty cool. I then went ahead and printed in the rich mode, which also boosted the reds back and the oranges back. That allowed me to get a nice natural face tone, but also really accentuate the blues without the face looking waxy. Now, this is the part that's so much fun with the Instax Mini Evo. You get to play around with these and learn these things. Now, just to give you an example, I wanna show you two separate images printed exactly the same. These are the same image, but one was printed in the rich and one was printed in the normal. The difference is night and day. The pale blue in the normal color mode is a little bit more washed out and it does not have any pop of blue. 
but when printed with the rich mode, we can see what the vibrancy does to the image. It's really nice. These are things left for you to decide and determine. In the same way, we can shoot with black and white, we can digitally zoom, and we can get these gorgeous landscapes right here, all with the camera. From portrait to landscape, black border to special white, or mermaid, the Instax Mini Evo has a lot of creative options. Final thing I want to share with you before we go is how I use the Instax Mini Evo when I'm at... All right, friends, I'd like to share with you how I use this app at weddings. I don't waste time with transferring images from my digital camera over to the digital camera's app on my phone, and then from the app over to the Instax app on my phone, and then from the Instax app to printing. I just carry this camera with me on my hip while I'm walking around. And in order to do that, I just pick it out and take photos with it when I need to. Now, there are some things I think about when I'm taking photos. I do use a little Ulanzi light just like this attached to the top so I can get extra flash when I need it. I also spend a lot of time, as we can see, working in the plus one or minus one third stop range with my flash. And I choose a lot of different lens modes in order to get the shot that I want. And as you can see, I just carry the camera around with me. Not all of the images are going to come out good. In fact, I don't know that the hit rate is very high with the images that I like from this camera at all. But sometimes it's not about that. Sometimes it's about just taking a moment, capturing a candid shot, and then printing it out. And that's what I found that my brides and grooms like. It's a lot of fun, I gotta tell you. Guys, I've been Rob. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. I hope that it has helped you understand the app. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. Don't forget to use those Amazon links, like, and subscribe. And I want to thank you for watching and remind you that I will catch you on the flip side. Bye for now.